Now, if you live in or have ever visited the South, you know that gravy is not just a sauce or a condiment. It's an entire food group. We'll take a hamburger, top it with mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, lettuce, tomato, Heinz 57, not going there, onions, pickles, chili, and then whatever else we can find, and then top it with gravy. It's just how we do. And gravy is real easy to make. It's just salt, pepper, pan drippings, milk, flour. Oh, milk and flour. So I guess I need to make it without the milk and flour. So how am I gonna do that? Stick around. So gravy is for sure a food group. Think about all the things with gravy. Biscuits and gravy, dressing and gravy, turkey and gravy. You can basically take any food, put it here, take gravy and put it here, and you've got a traditional Southern food. You think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. So how am I gonna make a version of gravy without the milk and flour? And without using 86 different ingredients and powders and what am I gonna do? Well, I can tell you this, the real Southern chefs are gonna be chasing me down for this, but guess what? They're not gonna catch me because I've lost over 75 pounds eating stuff just like this. And I'm gonna show you how to make a Southern white gravy right now. So here's what you're gonna need for this keto white gravy. And by the way, some people call it sawmill gravy. You're gonna need some cream cheese. I get this brand from Aldi, but use whatever you like. You're gonna need an onion. And this is a medium to large size onion. I like the Vidalia, it's a real sweet onion. You're gonna need some minced garlic. I like that. From Walmart, it's just convenient. Some bone broth concentrate, and you're gonna make that into a bone broth to add to this recipe. If you'd rather use bone broth in a carton, that's fine too. You're gonna need some Parmesan cheese. And I know a lot of these ingredients are not in a traditional gravy, but trust me, you're gonna love it. You're gonna need some pink salt, either Redmond's Real Salt or this Himalayan salt that I get at Sam's Club. And I like to crack my own pepper. So I'm gonna use some fresh cracked pepper from my pepper mill. So I'm gonna weigh all these things out and don't worry, you don't have to follow along with this. I'm gonna put the recipe down below so that you can just check down there and see exactly how much of each thing that you need. But one thing I will say with the salt and pepper, you always wanna make sure you taste anything that you're cooking for seasoning. But this gravy, especially because you may like it a little saltier than I do, you may not but let's get to making it. Now I like to get all my ingredients prepped, chopped, measured, weighed, whatever I need to do before I get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my onion. So I'm just gonna cut it into smaller pieces. But to do all the hard work, I'm gonna use one of my favorite kitchen tools, which is this chopper. So I just load it in and just bang out the small pieces. I use the small dicer in this recipe if you like a little bit bigger chunks, you could use the larger dice or just chop them up however you like them. This thing works so easy though and it makes it prep a whole lot better. So to this pan, I'm gonna add in some bacon grease. You can add as much as you like, but I'd say about a tablespoon or so would be perfect. And then you're just gonna melt that down until it's hot and it's happy enough to take these onions. So just dump the onions right in and we're just gonna let those cook down for just a little bit. Make sure you stir them up every once in a while. And that's the sound that they should be making right here. That's the sound of some extra happy onions. Now you're gonna keep cooking these for just a little while until they start looking like this. Once they get translucent, go ahead and add that cream cheese right in. And we're just gonna break this up a little bit don't be scared to break it up now, get in there. Cut it up just like that, and we're gonna start melting that down in the pan. Now once it's broken down pretty good like that, we're gonna go ahead and go in with the chicken broth. And I used about two teaspoons of that bone broth concentrate in this liquid. It gives it a little bit more flavor. If you don't like it like that, you can use it straight out of the carton, or just use a little bit less but it gives it a nice rich flavor if you really add in just a little more than what you're supposed to. Now, after it's melted down like this, I'm gonna go in with the cheese. And I like to kind of sprinkle it around like that. Now, 
If you don't like to do that, you could dump it all in one spot and stir it up. But this is the way I like to do it, just to kind of incorporate it a little bit easier. You can see how those chunks are kind of breaking up just a little bit like that as it heats up, and that's what you want. This is gonna make a great uniform, creamy consistency for our gravy. And those onions in there are optional, by the way, but they really add a great flavor to it that you're just not gonna get with another gravy. If you like videos about keto sauces and condiments, hit the subscribe button that just lit up for you down there, and you'll know anytime I upload a new one. Now it's time to go in with the pepper. If you've ever had a good white southern gravy or sawmill gravy, you know that the black pepper is key. Now I've done this a little bit finer than I normally do. A lot of times I like to leave bigger chunks of the pepper in there, a little more coarse grind, but this time I decided to go in with it. And I'll use my flat whisk like this to go in to combine it even better. If you don't have one of those, you can use another whisk, but this really helps it once it gets to this heat and this stage in the cooking process. It helps everything combine together really, really nicely. So I would definitely recommend whisking it if you can. Some whisking music for you right there. This is the consistency you're looking for. And once you have gotten here, you're there. So this is the gravy. This is the texture you want. And now, what to put it on. And no, I'm not just gonna put it on this plate, although can't say that I've never just eaten gravy before, but I like to have a nice piece of country fried steak, or you could do a nice piece of turkey, or like I said on the beginning of the video, basically pick out whatever food you want and you can put gravy on it. If you wanna be true Southern, there you go. Top it with this nice white gravy. I mean, look how great that looks. If you've never had a true Southern white gravy before, just make this one and you will never know the difference. You know what this gravy goes great on? Chicken fried steak. And I've got a great keto chicken fried steak video. I'm gonna put it right over there for you. Check that out next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.